the Institute for Transportation Research and Education recently completed a study of rumble strip gaps for high-speed bicycles. This project was sponsored by the North Carolina Department of Transportation. This research effort began from stated concerns from bicyclists about the maneuverability across shoulder rumble strip gaps at high speeds and the potential for safety concerns. The lack of specifications for shoulder rumble strip use on roads with steep grades and bicycle traffic led to the development of this study. Steep grades, which are primarily common in the western part of the state, in combination with heavily traveled bicycle routes were our primary focus. The objective of this research study was to evaluate impacts of shoulder rumble strips on bicycle maneuverability, comfort, and speed with varying shoulder rumble strip gap lengths and shoulder widths. The research also considered trade-offs between the use of shoulder rumble strips as a motor vehicle safety countermeasure and the safety impact on bicyclists. The experiment was conducted in Swain County near Fontana Lake and the Nantahala River on a segment of NC-28 near Almond. The roadway is a four-lane median divided highway with four feet wide paved shoulders with no rumble strips. The advantage of this location included the low traffic volume with 4,700 vehicles per day, a long straight distance with consistent steep grade of approximately 6.5% to facilitate higher speeds for the participants, and good pavement quality with minimal cracks and debris. Participants went through the course 11 times. The first two runs used the full lane to get baseline speeds. The third run used four foot shoulder to see if speeds changed based on less lateral space in which to maneuver. In the remaining eight runs, participants were asked to cross gaps. We adjusted the gaps in two foot increments from 24 feet down to 12 feet. There were in and out maneuvers for each scenario moving through the same gap length and we adjusted the shoulder width in two foot increments from four feet to eight feet. We had 20 participants, and of those participants, 75% biked at least two, one to two times per week with an average of six to 15 miles per trip. We also had a mixture of bicycle types. When examining the results from the study, we found a positive relationship between the rumble strip gap length and the speed and comfort rating. As the gap length increased, we saw higher speeds and higher comfort ratings. However, all runs resulted in comfort ratings that were rated as comfortable, which shows that the participants went as fast as they felt comfortable to stay within a certain comfort range. The difference between the lowest and highest speeds was approximately five miles per hour. The dip in 22 and 24 foot speeds was likely due to the order in which the runs were made. Those were the first scenarios in which subjects were asked to cross a gap, so they may have been more cautious on the first run downhill with a gap crossing. Similar to the gap length data, for the shoulder width testing, the subjects went as fast as they felt comfortable to stay within a certain comfort range. The difference in speed between the four foot and eight foot shoulder widths was statistically significant with subjects going 2.6 miles per hour faster with the eight foot shoulders. While the comfort rating differences between the shoulder widths was minimal. This study found that bicyclists are more comfortable with longer gap lengths and less likely to clip or hit the rumble strips with longer gaps. To examine the impact of gap length on vehicles that leave the roadway, we plotted three curves depending on three different rumble strip widths, 8, 12, and 16 inches, to determine the maximum gap lengths allowed for varying angles of departure before a vehicle would miss driving over a rumble strip. Looking at a 3 degree angle of departure, we see that a 12, with a 12 inch wide rumble strip, the gap could potentially be up to 19 feet long before a vehicle would be likely to run through the gap and not detect the rumbles. This study found no clear relationship between the shoulder width and the comfort level of the gap crossing. It's important to note that there are many reasons one may want to cross a gap, and depending on the reason, a bicyclist's decision-making time may be extremely short. For our study, there were no traffic conditions for participants to check for before making a decision to cross. Additionally, the participants couldn't choose at which point on the hill they wanted to cross a gap. 
If a cyclist is avoiding debris or another obstacle, they may have little time to make the decision to change positions laterally. If a cyclist is moving in advance of a left turn, a bicyclist may strategically choose a gap to cross at a speed that is comfortable for them before getting into the travel lane and moving at a higher speed. We noted other important considerations in our study. The availability of an adequate shoulder width could reduce a bicyclist's need to move into a travel lane by allowing extra room for maneuvering around obstacles while remaining on the shoulder and allowing another, enough lateral space for bicyclists to feel comfortable at their desired speed. The specific placement of the gaps and related signage or markings could be very important to the function of the roadway for bicyclists. This could include the strategic placement of gaps in advance of areas that bicyclists need to turn left and merge into the travel lane. Also, gaps may, need, may be needed more or less frequently in select areas. The consideration of how bicyclists use a road is important. For instance, on uphill climbs, bicyclist speeds are much lower than vehicles and extra width in a shoulder may be important for staying on the shoulder. On steep downhill sections, bicyclists may prefer to merge into the lane since the difference in speeds will be lower. Thank you for your interest in this research study. The final report is available and contains additional details. The following video, video clips show various trials of the experiment.